G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading an old newspaper report about the capture of a bunyip at Cape Otway, Victoria, in 1847. So we'll get into it. This was published in the Geelong Advertiser and Squatters Advocate, on Tuesday, the 21st of September, 1847, titled Extraordinary Sea Monster. On Sunday, the 24th, as three men employed at Cape Otway by the contractor for the lighthouse were strolling on the beach between the site of the intended lighthouse and the River Eyre, the distance from the former being about three miles, they observed a strange object stretched on the sand about 30 yards and about five or six from the water before them. They forthwith began to speculate as to what it was, on which, roused by the sound of their voices, the object of conjecture immediately turned around, displaying a body in appearance as extraordinary as it was frightful. The head resembled that of a mastiff, but larger and rounder. Its mouth as the animal approached the intruders, was open, displaying a most formidable array of teeth, the teeth being about two and a half inches long. Its neck was short and thick. Its body was quite round. At the thickest part, measured about five feet in circumference, but considerably diminished and became flat towards the tail. The belly was of a silver color, the back black, and the sides are light grey with white spots. The length was nine feet two inches, and as he approached the men, chewing his teeth most fiercely, as if determined to shoe fight, their first impulse was to get away as quietly as possible. But finding that he moved rather slowly, they gathered courage, and mounting a small eminence of stones, began to pelt him with great vigour. He continued to face them, however, and in his own clumsy manner, made an attempt to approach the men, each in turn as he threw the stone being the object of the monster's attack. The occurrence lasted about two hours and was terminated by the men throwing quantities of sand down his throat, which was more easily done as his formidable jaws were never closed from the time that he was first seen. After he was dead, he was immediately skinned, and part of the hide may be now seen in Geelong. The most remarkable part of the animal, by whatever name it may be called, were four extraordinary appendages, two of which resembled the leg of a quadruped, proceeding from the root of the tail, each being about two feet long and furnished with two flaps, the flaps being about six inches long and each mounted at its extremity with two talons resembling the bill of an eagle hawk, the other two proceeding from the shoulders and were two strong cartilages terminating in fine talons similar to already alluded to. These appendages were connected to the body by means of a thin web which gave the, the whole very much appearance of wings. These were called into requestion when the animal moved himself. On them, it seemed to raise its whole body, and by using them in a peculiar way, it turned or helped itself. The other appendages or legs seemed to be quite useless on dry land. Next day, the carcass was drawn to, cape, to the cape by four bullocks and out of a small part of it, two gallons of excellent oil were procured, and which still served to enlighten the solitary inhabitants in that locality. The remainder of the carcass would, it is computed, have produced 30 gallons if proper means have been taken. The skeleton is still in the neighborhood and may be inspected by the curious in such manners. Much speculation has been hazarded as to the identity of this monster, some supposing it to be a seal, but many circumstances such as its boldness on being approached, several peculiarities in its external appearance, as well as the expressed opinion of an experienced courier that the skin is not a seal skin, 
tend to do away with this superstition. The end. Okay, so here's another account that was done in the same paper, titled Marine Bunyip. The men who have come up from Cape Otway have brought with them the skin of a singular animal recently killed at the Cape. While passing along the shore, a party of men came upon the creature, which appears to have been asleep or sunning itself in the open air. Roused from its torpid position, the animal shewed no inclination for making to the water. It faced the party and even pursued them some way. They succeeded in killing him by throwing stones at his head. The carcass measured nine feet in length. The head was round, not unlike a mastiff's. Its arms were long and muscular and were connected to the body by a membrane like a bat's wing. The body resembled that of a man, deep chested and terminated by powerful rudimentary legs. The skin was covered with a close short fur back on the black, black on the back, blue and white spotted like a leopard on the sides and silvery on the belly. The men have repeatedly seen seals at the cave and are positive that it was quite a different animal. Was it of the walrus kind or what? In the absence of a more scientific name, we will call him Marine Bunyip. Well, wow, that's uh, pretty amazing what these guys have seen. They're saying it's got like the head of a mastiff dog, but larger and rounder, and it had teeth two and a half inches long. Um, it had uh, extraordinary appendages, two of which uh, look like the leg of a quadruped, and they proceeded from the root of the tail, and uh, they were like uh, two feet long and had flaps on the end of them, and uh, on the end of the flaps, that was six inches long. There was um, two talons resembling an, the bill of an eagle. And then the other arms were, its main arms, its forearms, its arms were long and muscular and were connected to the body by a membrane like a bat's wing. And the body resembled that of a man, deep chested and terminated by two rudimentary legs. The skin was covered in uh, short black fur on the back and blue and white spotted like a leopard on the sides and silvery on the belly. And then the, an experienced cur courier, a guy that tans and skins animals, he said the skin's not a seal skin. And then the men that were found the creature, they've seen seals at the Cape themselves and they said it's not a seal at all, which is really interesting. And like, there's no way that this is a seal, not with four legs, no way, because seals do not have legs. Okay, that's it for me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.